Hello everyone, welcome back to Tammy's Bookshelf. Today we're gonna do a TBR Clue. So TBR Clue is my way of picking books every month. Honestly, I finish up books pretty quickly in the month of May and I am excited to see what the jar has for me or what my mug has for me and what rooms I have to pull for in this book. Because I have finished all the books, let's run through what the, I guess the cards were for each room, but I'll tell you what the books were and I'll show the pictures on the screen like normal. So for the haul, I had to read a book for a read-along or read-thon and I read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. For the lounge, I had to read a book with a long title and I read The Case of the Bizarre Bouquets by Nancy Springer. For the dining hall, I had to read a book but with a Dr. Orchid related. And I read The Boys from Brazil. For the kitchen, I had to read a book about The Wrench and I read Holo Homicide in Hall Holla by Mia P. Manasala. For the ballroom, I had to read a book that was relating to the word now, and I read The Elegance of a Hedgehog by Merle Burberry. For the conservatory, I had to read a book about poetry, and I read Havis by Shizar. Um, it was a poetry collection, ancient poetry. For the billiards room, I had to read a book to buy, and I kind of stretched it into a book to request arc um, for one of the book to readathons. So I read Murder in the Neighborhood by Ellen Green. And then for the library, I had to read a new to me book. So I read The Heart's Charge by Karen Whitmire. And for the study, I had to read a book related to the lounge. And I read North Point Chalet by Deborah Whitesmith. So my official guest is in the ball, uh, in the dining room with Miss Scarlet is the candlestick. And that came out weird, but that's what we're going with. Apparently, Miss Scarlet likes her uh, candlestick like she did last year. So Miss Scarlet the candlestick, and the dining room. All right, we're going to set up the game for next month while we talk through my reading plans. So in June, I only have a couple readathons I want to partake in. I'm going to do Ancients Athon again like last year. I have a lot of ancient literature I would like to try to get to on my shelves that I've been collecting kind of for this readathon, to be honest. Uh, that's being hosted by several hosts, um, but Jennifer Brooks, Tori from Hufflepuff Discovery, and another host, and I can't remember his name right now. I will link him down below, I'm so sorry. I should have um, been better about that before. I also have plans to do the Golden Girls readathon for this year or this month. I have never watched the Golden Girls though, so I'm gonna, I don't know whose team I'm going to jump on. I will see what prompts best fit my books that I am required to pick though, that's for sure. And then I also have not really any book reading, I don't know, reading plans like for more readathons, but I do have some buddy reads or at least one. I will be reading The Case of the Peculiar Pink Fan. I think that's what it's called. Um, that's the next Anola Holmes book, which I'll be reading with Chris from Chris's Corner. So I will be reading that one for sure. We'll be reading that series until uh, September. And I'm happy about that. I actually also will be reading for the Analog, um, the next book, which is the, let me think, I think is that Anne of Ingleside? I'll just have to check for that after I'm done shuffling. And of course, I'll be doing my own read along starting, which will be The Count of Monte Cristo. Well, I'm doing this read along with several people and I will link them down below along with my NASA video for you to check out. So this is that. Um, I also should tell you by this point, um, I have not yet read my two author jar pulls. Apparently they're the last priority that I get to every month. This one in particular, this month has been really brutal in terms to stress and uh, I don't know how else to say. Uh, I've had a very brutal work month and I can't say that and I uh, properly describe it. So I'm just gonna say that it's been extremely bad and I am just happy that May's almost done. I don't know what June's gonna bring and I hope June is better, I don't know. So I am trying to work on my two TBR jar author pulls. I am still gonna work on them, but they are not completed and barely started to be completely frank with you. So we're gonna pull out two more. And if I don't really make any headway with them, I'll put them back in if I'm just feeling like a slump is coming on. So I have two full ones in my hand. Let's just go with these two. So this one is Shirley Jackson. That's short, I think I can do it. And Jack London, who I've already tried. So I'm gonna put him away and we'll pull out another one. 
So this one, Thomas Hardy. I don't want to do Thomas Hardy. I'm sorry. I'm going to put him back. I am not good for depressing books right now. No, thank you. Um, I just told you my month is bad at work or stressful at work. I'm not doing that to myself. All right, this one here. Okay, that's a play. We'll do that. We'll do that. I'll grab them. Funnily enough, they're right beside each other. So we have always lived in a castle by Shirley Jackson. So I got close there for a second. Um, I also own on ebook The Haunting of Hill House. So I could do that one too, but this one uh, looks interesting. I I don't know, I've never read anything by Shirley Jackson before, but I have a couple books on, by her, I guess. So it's about time I read it, and I know that's kind of spooky, so I don't know what I need to try anymore. I will try this one first though, because I own it physically. And then I have four plays by Eugene, and I'm gonna butcher the last name again, um, Isokos. So I think this one's the bizarrest one I needed to be aware of when I tried reading his plays. So uh, I have in here The Bald Soprano, The Lesson in the Chairs, and Jack or the Submission. So um, I will be trying out these, and this was translated. So I think this might be South American. I'm not sure, um, but yeah, Let, let's go with it. All right, these are my two author polls. We're gonna get into the game and uh, we'll see what happens for the pulls. I hope they're nice to me. I really need nice pulls and that probably just jinxed it, but I really need nice pulls this month. Before I move any farther, I did wanna quickly make one note, one really sad mention that my old tripod has died. This is my three year anniversary on booktube. My June TBR is always my th three year anniversary. I started June three years ago. Well, not every June is my three year, but every June is my yearly anniversary on booktube. So the top snapped off and uh, this little baby survived three years with me or almost three years. And I just wanted to commemorate it. So it's a lot later now, but we will now get into what each one was for. And then after that, we'll get into the Golden Girls Readathon and the Ancients Athon TBRs. Uh, they kind of cross over, but not too much. So let's get into, first of all, the rooms. Prompt one for the hall is the study. So for the first one, we got The Study, which I am already giving you a sneak peek of the book. And I am going to be reading for that one, uh, Murder Mesopotamia. This one's by Agatha Christie. This one's for the Read Christie 2022. Uh, this one is for the prompt of a book featuring um, archaeology. And I don't really want to reread Death Comes as the End again, as I just read that. I could cut, read another one, but I am kind of interested to reread this one knowing the end result. So this one's gonna go tentatively as mine, like 90% of it, but I might change it up. No promises, but pretty sure. So yeah, this one follows Poirot, but not really it follows a nurse who goes to spend time with this woman who is having these fits of paranoia, it seems. She's on this very uh, remote site, essentially, and she is seeing a ghost it seems like and so she's there and then later on there's a death a murder and uh Hercule Poirot comes along and it's a Hercule Poirot novel but you see it through the nurse's eyes and I think it's a really interesting one I am really happy to reread this one again prompt two for the lounge it's two this one is the knife for the lounge we got the knife and I will be reading Treasure Island for this one tentatively. They use swords, which are kind of like big knives. Uh, this edition has a wonderful flag on the inside. It's gorgeous. I love these editions. And I have watched Treasure Island. I've never read Treasure Island. So I'm excited to read this one. And it has been a long time since I've actually watched it. So I do know the overall story. However, I am excited to get into this one again um, as like an overall theme. And it's, like I said, been a long time. I love the skull at the edge and it will be a good quick read, I hope. So I think it'll be fun. 
Prompt three is fantasy or sci-fi. My next one is the fantasy and sci-fi one for the dining room. And for that one, I will be reading the next book of the Wizard of Oz series. This one is by L. Frank Baum and it is called Rinkatink in Oz. I have not read the uh, next one after that one called, or I have not read The Tin Woodman of Oz, but I have the two before it yet to read in this edition. And this one will also count for the book cover book club as it has all the colors of the rainbow on it. And at least in this edition, which I'm very happy for. It is not that long of a book as they all are. This one I think clocks in at, let me just see, 219 pages. So very short in this. I might just get an audiobook. However, I'll be enjoying a fast fantasy read because I'm telling you, even though these are short ones so far, a big ones are coming up. Prompt four for the kitchen is Professor Plum or the color purple. The next one was uh, Professor Plum or the color purple. So I didn't go with the color purple, but I did go with Professor Plum being at a school and teaching or whatever else, but more specifically a university. So I will be reading A Kiss Before Dying by Ira Levin. I really loved reading The Boys from Brazil and I want to be on top of reading his other book that I own instead of just saying, oh, I loved his book instead of actually going on to the next one. So I'll be reading this one as soon as I can, which will be this month. This one's about a woman named Dorothy, which is kind of funny because I'm going to be on Team Dorothy for the Golden Girls team, just so you know. Uh, but a woman named Dorothy meets a handsome young man in her first year at university. And basically she becomes pregnant and he's going to pay for her abortion, but she might die as well. And it's a mystery. I can't wait to find out what happens next because the boys from Brazil really gripped me and I can't wait to read more. Prompt six for the dining room or for the ballroom is a seasonal read. For this one we got seasonal read and for that one I will be reading Anne of, I will be reading Anne of Ingleside. I keep wanting to say Anne of Green Gables, but no, Anne of Ingleside. This one is the next one and Anne books just always feel like the right summer books. I don't know why, they feel like summer and spring books so it's gonna be a summer one. It also looks like a summery cover. This one is the next one after Anne's House of Dreams when uh, she's a mother. So that's gonna be an interesting one. I'm excited to continue on in the series and see how she goes as a mother. I can't remember this book in particular, so it'll be good to read it and discover it all over again. Prompt for the conservatory is Thriller. For Thriller, I'm going to do my best word -a book, which will be All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. I have well, owned this book for a really long time, but I've never read it. So this book is told backwards, I believe, and I have really wanted to read it because of that, but for some reason, I've never prioritized it. This is the month, and I don't know anything else. It looks like it's at a carnival, and I just don't know. It's gonna be interesting. I'm excited. Thriller, it sounds more intense than just a normal cozy mystery, so that's why I'm putting it in this category. So off we go with this one. Prompt for the billiards room is new to me author. For a new to me author, I will be reading The Lives of the Caesars by Sue Taunus. I have never read this one and I've never read from this author before. This is a nonfiction about ancient Rome. I am very excited to pick this one up and try it. I've owned it for a very long time and I have been curious to try and read this. It is a little daunting because it's ancient history and nonfiction, but I am very curious because of it and because of the nonfiction I've been reading more recently about ancient and medieval times this year. And I'm excited to give this one a really good solid shot and hopefully I love it. Prompt for the library, no, the library is a play. For the next room, we got a play, which that's upside down, sorry, play. Um, I will be putting in one of my 
prompts in here, one of my polls, which is these plays. I'm not sure which one I'll read yet, but I will pick one and maybe try to find one to watch if possible, because I think that's a fiend. I find that's a better way to intake this material, but if I can't, I will just read it and uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm sure it'll be interesting and I'm excited to try out a new playwright. And prompt for the study is the ballroom. The final one is the ballroom. And for that one, we'll be reading, or I will be reading, We Have Always Lived in a Castle, or We Have All, yeah, We Have Always Lived in a Castle by Shirley Jackson. I'm only putting this one in here because castles have ballrooms. I'm gonna go with that. I don't know anything about this one. I just kind of want to go in blind and I'm happy about that because it's so short. I think it'll be a good choice and I'm excited to see where this takes me. So that doesn't look too bad for my TBR clue, uh, but that's not it by any standard. So before we get into the other TBRs, I do have, of course, the Count of Monte Cristo, which we are starting this buddy read, this read along summer, the summer, um, we're doing it for two and a half months. You are welcome to join us. We're starting reading unofficially, officially on June 1st, and we're going to have our first group discussion live stream on my channel on the 18th. So you're welcome to come and join and click subscribe in case you want to uh, get ready to get notified when we start talking about the Count of Monte Cristo. I will leave my announcement video linked down below so you can find out what's the breakdown of chapters, but it should be pretty manageable and this book flies by. So not the whole thing, but I'll be reading probably 40% of that this month. So I'm very excited, but it is a chonker. Not to mention, I have pulled out my new big book, which is David Copperfield. And this one is over 700 pages. So I'm kind of like, what have I done to myself? Uh, but I'm excited to pick up this one. I uh, love David, uh, not David, I love uh, Charles Dickens. When I read him, I just never actually find the priority to do so. So I'm excited about this. I don't know if I'll finish it in June, but I will be trying to. So uh, here's this one coming up as well. So that's a bit of a beast too. So for, first of all, Golden Girls Readathon, I, like I said, I'll be team Dorothy and I have worked out what I'll be reading for what prompt in particular. Um, this took me a while because I had to first do a quiz. I want to do a quiz first to see what person I would be if I was one of the Golden Girls. So I got Dorothy, so I chose her. And then I had to figure out what book Dorothy would read um, because it's one of the prompts. So let's just go with that one first. In accordance to what she would read, she would be reading a lot of plays, according to what I found. I'll link what I found below. Uh, but basically, I found an article that had all the literary references ever in the Golden Girls. And whenever Dorothy's talking, she tends to talk about a lot of Shakespeare and a lot of plays. So I'm going to be putting in this one for that prompt, whatever play I read, or an Elizabethan drama because she talks about a lot of plays. I'm just saying she references them a lot from what I read. And I am actually going to try watching some Golden Girls in June to see what it's all about. Um, so yes, these will be my official what my girl would be reading kind of idea. For a book that has a D on the cover somewhere, I will be reading Enola Holmes, The Case of the particular peculiar pink fan. There's a D over here, which is outsmarting the world's greatest sleuth. So worlds is there. Um, so this one I'll be reading with Chris from Chris's Corner. I will link their channel down below. And this one is really short. It's going to be an adventure. I'm sure it's under 200 pages and I'm excited to move on to the next step of Noel Holmes. This one looks like she has to team up with her brother and I'm excited to see that. And this one also has a very interesting cover for that. And for the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge, there is a little bit of a paper on the cover, which I'm going to count for a book on your on the cover. So I'm going to count that for that particular prompt and that challenge. So for the school setting prompt, we'll be reading A Kiss Before Dying, as this happens at university, and that's a school. So tentatively, and I'm saying this very tentatively because I put this on a couple more TBRs and I've never read it yet. Um, for the 80s to 90s book prompt, I'm going to put on Lost World by Michael Creighton. I really want to finish this duology. Um, so this was written in the 90s, so I'm going to put this on here. Shamefully, because I should have read it by now. For a book that has literary fiction, Storygraph tells me that this one falls under literary fiction. I'm going to take it and run with it. So uh, 
There we go. That's my literary fiction prompt. For the female main character prompt, I'm going to go with this one as Nurse Amy. She is a very strong female main character in this one. I'm going to go with that one. For the LGBTQ prompt, I'm going to be reading the next book in the Doctor, not the Doctor, in the uh, Mr. Ripley series by, oh, what's her name? Patricia Highsmith. I know it. Um, it's called Ripley Underground and I'm excited to continue on that series. I've read it years ago and I should have read, continued on since then. And for the author who has a disability, I'm going to be going with my prayer. My, my body is not a prayer request by Amy Kenny. This one is says that the author is a disabled scholar. So I'm going to go with that one. So the final prompt that I haven't completed yet in this TBR plan is reread a favorite. And if I can't double up, which I will count the Murder Mesopotamia book for if I can, if I can't, I will be reading Anne of Ingleside for that prompt. I know I'm missing one. So I'm just going to put the picture up here. If I do have one that I am missing, so on to Ancient Sathon. We're finally there. Uh, so for the first one, it's just read a play. I have three plays in here, two plays actually in here that I have left to read. So I'll be reading one or both of them. I have Valpone by Ben Johnson and The Duchess of Malfi by John Webster. Web Webster, I believe. So I'll be reading one or both of these for a play prompt since I have finished Shakespeare since last time. For a work of poetry, I will be reading Haiku. This is classic Japanese short poems and it is translated by Hart Larrabee. Um, it is quite thick, but it has just one po uh, poem per page, if you can see that. And it is quite some, it's quite big, but it's beautiful. And it's something I've been saving and holding on to for a perfect readathon like this or prompts to direct me to this. So I'm excited to pick this one up. I should also mention that I'm in the middle of Psalms right now, or just started Psalms in my Bible reading. And if I don't finish that before June 1st, as I'm filming like a few days ahead of time, then I will be counting that also as Psalms or poems because they are written in those lyrical ways. So for the next two, which is something that is nonfiction and for something over 300 pages, this qualifies as both. This is the Lives of the Caesars and it is 365 pages. So I will be uh, reading that one, if you can see that number, I will be reading this one for both of those prompts. For the next prompt to read something that's religious or mythological, I'll be reading my Bible books, which will be either Psalms or Proverbs or however that works out. I will see how far I get, but I'll also have the audiobook of Beowulf. So I'll be listening to that, which I believe is based in mythology. So if it's not, I will be at least reading my Bible books to work with that prompt. I'm also reading the group book, which is uh, the book of the city of the La of ladies. And that one is an audiobook that I have, and I will be listening to that one as well. And also I have tried to knock off all three of the bonus, like the bonus areas. So one of ancient literature being, I have the lives of the Caesars being also the Renaissance. And I think this counts as Renaissance, these plays um and then also the medieval work which is beowulf so i am knocking up all of the areas for ancient Sathon as well so that wraps up almost everything if not everything i think it does that counts up all of my challenges that i'm partaking in as well as what's going on if i haven't thought of anything i will leave a picture here on the screen but i really think i've got it this time <laughs> So thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new here. Leave a comment down below about what you'll be reading if you're doing Ancient Sathon, The Golden Girls. I know whatever a thon's happening, but I just have a lot of books to read and I don't have, I know you can read whatever you want, but I didn't have extra prompt space. So my brain just did not have the time to fit all that in. Uh, so let me know what you're reading and what you're partaking in. I would love to chat down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I also know that I have not been able to respond to comments lately. My brain power has so zapped from work. I have not been able to respond for, to comments for a while. So thank you for being patient with me as I'm not able to respond to comments physically, but I really do appreciate them all. So thank you so much. Bye for now.